Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to look at more complicated trigonometric identities involving cosec, sec and cot. I'll first derive the identities and then show you how to use them solving equations in three exam style questions. As ever, please do pause the video or speed up or slow down as you need and do grab a pen and paper and work alongside. Let's get started. The identities we're going to look at today are involving cosec, sec and cot and they're just fancy words for 1 over sine, cos and tan, so nothing too complicated. The easiest way to remember if you struggle to get them the right way around is to look at the third letter of each name. So as I've underlined in green, the third letter can help you out S and S, C and C, T and T. Now let's take a look at the identities. If we start with this basic identity, we can derive two further identities using cosec, sec and cot. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So if we first of all divide everything by cos squared, then what we'll have here is sine over cos all squared. And sine over cos, as we know, is the same as tan. So this here will be tan squared. Cos squared over cos squared cancels to leave you just with 1. And then 1 over cos, as we've just seen, is sec. So 1 over cos squared is the same as all of 1 over cos squared, which is the same as sec squared. And that's your first identity. Now for the second identity, we're going to start with this again, but this time we'll divide by sine squared. Now this cancels to 1. Cos over sine is the flip, the inverse of tan. Um, so the inverse of tan, 1 over tan, is, as we know, cot. So this here will be cot squared. And 1 over sine, as we now know, is cosec. So that will be cosec squared. And that gives you the second identity. These two identities are best memorised so you know them off by heart and um, that's the quickest way to use them and it also means you'll be better able to recognise when you're using them. Um, but of course you can always derive them like I've done now, it's very quick to do so it, it might be worth doing in an exam. Okay let's take a look now at using these in questions. Here's our first question and we've been given a equation to solve. Um, at the moment we've got a tan and a sec. Now with trig equations the best thing is to convert stuff so it's all the same kind of thing. So this tan squared we could turn into sec squared. So then we've got an equation all just with sec in it. And the way to do that is by substituting in um, using the identity that we know. This is the identity, I'm just going to write it at the side and I've dropped the thetas for now. Um, but we want tan squared, so I'm going to just rearrange that and substitute it in. So we want tan squared, I'll make that the subject. And now I can substitute tan squared in the equation for sec squared minus 1. Now expand the brackets. This is now looking like a quadratic equation, so let's rearrange it and solve. Okay, I hope you're following this. I'm building on other videos here, so I've gone through this sort of work before. Um, this is a disguised quadratic, which I've factorised to solve. Either of these brackets could be zero, so I've skipped a line of working and, and gone on there. Now, when we solve these separately, what we can do is um, remember that sec is 1 over cos. We can flip the whole equation upside down again, so that we've got cos and that will be flipped, the reciprocal of 2 is a half. So again I've made the reciprocal of that one to flip it and get minus 3 over 4 and change that into cos and now we can 
solve those as basic trig equations. So I've got two solutions from each of those, giving four solutions in total in the range that we've been given. Um, I've used I used the cast diagram kind of in my head there, um, so I knew I was taking three the first solution off from 360, or you can use the trig graphs, which, whichever method you use. Um, you can check my other video on getting multiple solutions as well. Brilliant. Do rewind and have another go at that question, or well done if you're getting that right. Let's look at another one now. Another question here, it's quite similar really, um, but it's going to use the other identity this time. This question I pinched from a past paper, and just to give you some context, this one was worth 10 marks. Um, so that gives you an idea of, um, they're quite big questions and, you know, they're, they're well worth getting right. There's a lot of marks to pick up. So um, we're going to, again, try and change one of these so that we've got all the same throughout. And we can change this into cosec using the second identity. So I'm going to do the same as I did in the last question and substitute in the identity there to change it. Have a go yourself. Again, this looks like a quadratic equation, so I'm going to rearrange and solve that. Again, I've got two sets of solutions going on here. Um, Cosec is the reciprocal of sign, so I'm going to flip these over again like I did in the last question. Now sine and cos only have solutions up to 1, so if you did the inverse sine of 2, you'll get math error on your, on your calculator, and um, that's not going to have any solutions, so that's a dead end, that one. Um, but this one will have solutions, and it's going to have quite a few solutions because it's 3 theta. Um, our range is theta between 0 and 180, but um, what you can do here, actually a little trick to see what you're looking for when you first um, do the inverse of sine, is think about 3 theta. So theta is up to 180, but if we times everything there by 3, we'd have 540. So bear that in mind, we're actually going to look up to 540 degrees when we solve this now. So when we do the inverse on the calculator and do multiple solutions, look up to 540. So they're the first two I get. I'm going to do a second time around by adding 360 degrees onto them. And now we can divide everything by 3 to get theta. So there we go, we actually get four solutions only from that bracket there, that one didn't give any, but that's still four solutions. Well done if you're getting that. Let's look at one more question. Okay, let's finish with a little proof. Normally I use the solving equations questions um, in these videos, but I thought it'd be good to look at a proof just for some variety. So um, we're asked to make this look like this. And in proof questions, you tend to get the um, triple equal sign, just showing that it, it's an identity. You're proving something is exactly equal to something else. Think of it as it's like a step stronger than a normal equal sign. So with proofs, tem you tend to take one side and make it look like the other. So let's start with the left-hand side and play around with that. We've got two fractions, and the best thing to do in that scenario is to make them into one, combine them into one big fraction. So we need a common denominator, um, and the way to do that is um, times them together and then times the tops accordingly so that they're one fraction over a common denominator. Um, if it helps you to think about what you're doing in terms of numbers, just do a little example to the side, just to 
clarify that. So this fraction here we're going to times by cos, so cos times cos on the top will give us cos squared, and on the bottom we'll have that one times by that one. On this top here, we're timesing this fraction by 1 plus sine x, so we'll have all of that squared. Now we can expand this out and play around with it. When you do that, remember it's a double bracket expansion, so 1 plus sine x times by 1 plus sine x which is why you get the three terms there, don't let that trick you out. Now here on the top I've got cos squared plus sine squared and I know from previous identity that cos squared plus sine squared is one. Um, so on the top there I've got two, I'll just change that quickly. Um, and now that that's simplified down I can see um, if I factorise the top and the bottom, I, I expanded out the bottom, but if I refactorise it again, then um, something might cancel there. Yeah, so the bracket will cancel, leaving us with just 2 over cos x, which is the same as 2 times 1 over cos x, which, as we know, is 2 sec x. That's what we're trying to prove, so we've done it. Well done, keep practicing those, have fun, and um, I hope this is helpful. Thank you for watching.